morning. We begin our worship today with a college of welcoming. Please rise and join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening song, Christ for the World We Sing, 537 in your hymnal, verses 1 and 4. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our worthy unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord. Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, Thus you shall say to my servant David. Thus says the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be a prince over my people, Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people, Israel, and I will give you rest from your enemy. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth with your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of the kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 89, 
verses 20 to 37. We will read them by full verse. I have found David my servant with my holy oil, have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. Crush his foes before him, strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love are with him and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend to the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his spine forever, and his throne is the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes, do not keep my commandments, I will punish their trans transgressions with a rod and their iniquities with the lash. I will not take my love. Or let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once all I have sworn by my enemies, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore, like the abiding witness. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hand. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to, do his, to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. I'm in the midst right now of uh, the last intensive fortnight, the intensive two weeks of my Doctor of Ministry program. And the first week I spent up at Drew this past week uh, was focused on a class that uh, was dialed in on complex grief. And I don't have the time to unpack all that in 12 minutes. So just ask me about it later, but we'll talk. But in that, I'm also getting ready for this next week. And this next week is on the intensity of leadership and how we as leaders look at what we do to serve and help direct our communities, but also how we seek to form, nurture, and support the people who constitute that body. The challenge of last week, I had a professor who asked us to frame complex grief within the book of Jonah. Now, you know the story of Jonah, right? Swallowed by a great fish because he refused to go to Nineveh to proclaim God's doom on the Assyrian city. And on top of that, having rejected God and trying to flee in a ship to Tarshish in running away from God. How does that work out for you? Didn't work out for him either. He wound up putting the entire vessel and all the people on it at risk of destruction. So they cast lots, and it turns out that the lot fell to him, and he admitted that he had been running from God, which really upset his fellow travelers, because everybody wants to be on a boat with somebody running from God, right? That's how I want to spend my vacation. So they throw him into the water by his own desire and admission. And lo and behold, instead of drowning, which he was fully prepared to do, he was swallowed by a fish. Now, it's tempting because we're a disnified culture to think of that fish as like Monstro and Pinocchio, right? There is Jonah, like Geppetto, sitting in the midst of this big cavernous belly on a little tongue island with a little fishing pole and a fire cooking his supper wasn't like that for Jonah, it wasn't a whale, and it wasn't Disney. He was in the belly of a big fish, like a grouper. And he was just in there, in the midst of the fish guts, trying to figure out why he was still alive, what God intended, and what this great, close, womb-like silence really was all about. One of my favorite parts of the book is he cobbles together this odd little prayer, which we would also do if we were in the belly of a fish, trying to remember all the snippets from Sunday morning, all the little hymns, all the little prayers, all the little 
bits of the creed we we think we remember and sort of stitching it all together into this makeshift thing which basically allows that he understands now that god is really in charge and though he's wrapped up in fish guts and trying to figure out what his role in the universe is now that he's being digested that really god is in charge and he's willing to give god that grace I mean, you have to, you're being digested in the belly of a fish by the will of God. So God has the fish vomit him up on a beach near Nineveh and says, okay, now get up and go do what I asked you to do. And Jonah, repentant and whole, does that. And he travels for three days with the fish guts kind of drying on him, telling people to repent. And boy, do they repent. So much so that the king comes off the, comes off the throne puts on sackcloth and ashes, setting aside the fine robes, ordering the entire city down to the smallest mouse to fast and repent and pray to God that God's judgment might pass over them and not strike them. Now, this is why Jonah didn't want to do what God asked in the first place, because Jonah knew that God was merciful and God was going to forgive them. And God did. And that upset Jonah even more. So he went out and sat in the sun. Now, remember, he hasn't taken a shower yet. He sat in the sun to wait to see when God would come to God's senses and strike Nineveh as God did Sodom and Gomorrah with brimstone and fire and lightning and smoke and flood and whatever else the fervent imagination of Jonah could come up with about destroying the foe. And in the middle of the night, as Jonah was prepared to waste away, staring at the city, God caused a plant to grow up and cover Jonah. And, God, and Jonah thinks to himself, well, at least God's taking care of me because the sun's going to be out tomorrow and I'll be fine. And then God sends a worm to eat the root of the plant. So by the time the sun strikes Jonah and the plant in the morning, the plant has withered. And Jonah is even more incensed than before. I think he's even more sensey before, because think of that. It's been now four or five days since he showered, covered in fish guts. The level of his resentment must have been biblical and profound. And God says to Jonah, why are you mad? Is it right? When I am merciful, and it is my nature to be merciful, and these people repented, should I not give them my mercy? There are hundreds of thousands of people in that city, and many animals. Is it right for you to be mad? And the book leaves us with that question. Now you think, why is he bringing up Jonah when we're talking about David wanting to build the temple of God or Jesus trying and failing to offer the apostles and himself just a little time to have quiet reflection? It's because it's very hard for us with our limited perspectives and experiences ultimately to understand fully and completely our present moment and seeing in context and framing in context everything that is happening to us because God has an intention and a purpose. And I'm being very careful not to say plan, but a very careful intention and purpose through us to enact the kingdom of God. And sometimes that is our work to do. David had a hard life. He started it as a shepherd exposed to the elements, predators, with a helpless flock of sheep and goats that he was expected to tend with his own very life. And the only tools he was given to do that were a stick and a sling with some stones. And then he was anointed king before the present king, Saul, had died. And he was sent to live in Saul's court. And all the talents and all the grace that he brought to the table, literally, were things that got him in trouble with Saul to the point that when Saul was in one of his episodes and David was sent to soothe him, Saul threw a spear so hard that the spear was embedded in the wall and it missed David by an inch and David had to flee for his life. 
and fleeing for his life, people followed him. So not only was he on the run himself, but he was responsible for a whole community of people who were looking to him for protection and for shelter and for food. And they were so hungry that they broke into the sanctuary of God and ate the reserve sacrament, the showbread. They survived on wafers and leftover wine. And then finally, in an ultimate battle with Saul, he lost his opponent, but he also lost his best friend, Jonathan, Saul's son, who was also killed. And by the time he came to rest in the holy city, in a house made of cedar, in robes that were appropriate for a king, and he finally had rest, he looked out and saw the ark of God sitting in a tent on his front lawn. And he thought to himself, I have to finish the work that God gave me to do, presuming that I am responsible for making sure that God has a safe place to rest. And God, through Nathan, says to him, you think I need a house? I'll have one. But that's not your job. I think that's the hardest thing we face as human beings to be told something's not our job, not our task, that we are told that, that all the rest of the things that we are called to do of all those things, that one thing that we're obsessing about might not be the very thing that God is asking of us. God might be asking of us just simply to be present in this moment. When Jonah was in the belly of the fish, there was nothing else he could do except what? Be in the belly of the fish. And yet he struggled with that as we all would ourselves. The complex grief course I took helped me reframe not only the context of grief with which I'm walking, and I've had my fair share as we all have, but also as I look towards this next course of leadership, it reminds me just how profoundly bound we are to each other in the name of the body of Christ to understand that though we would be further down the road, than we wish right now, we are given a profound gift of being fully present in this moment. It might not always be pleasant. In fact, we might be as bound by grief in this moment as Jonah was bound by fish guts in the belly of that enormous grouper. But it gives us a moment to pause and stop and reflect to understand that God's purpose and intention working through us really is going to accomplish more than we could ever ask or imagine. That God's work through us, profound and miraculous and full of the grace and glory of the witness of Christ Jesus, who lived, who died, and who was resurrected, is now in the present moment our agency to frame the challenges that we are embracing in this present moment and to give thanks for them. One of the prayers I offer in the sacristy before we gather for worship as the procession heads out is, Lord, as we raise our voices to and praise, quicken our hands to your service so that we might proclaim in word and deed the glory of God in Christ. And instead of being distracted from that in these two weeks of intensive courses, I'm glad I'm finding more clarity in it. When we say these things, when we pray these things, when we work at these things, we are consecrating ourselves as the apostles were consecrated to the work of proclaiming the kingdom. And lo and behold, when we do that, the world shows up and we are able to serve and glorify God in that service. Exactly. And when we are in that space, whether we feel like we're in the belly of a fish or on the shore of Lake Gennesaret with Christ or like David for a moment sitting in respite and gazing out on a thing we feel like we should be doing, but God is asking us just for the moment to rest, let us take that breath and give thanks. For whether we are in respite or in labor, we are fully now and forever consecrated to be the body of Christ in this world so that we might lead people with joy to the threshold of the next. Amen. My siblings in Christ, I ask you to stand now and affirm our baptismal faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. 
Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven. All that is seen in us. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten of God, made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You have made us in your image. Open our eyes to see your image in those with whom we worship, work, and live. For those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Kevin and Anthony, and for those celebrating anniversary, especially Angie and Paul, Margaret and Preston, and Tiffany and Kareem, we remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the Nippon, Sai, Ko, Kai. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the commission on alcohol and drug abuse. Increase our desire for you and your ways. In your mercy, O oh God. We lift before you the body of Christ, our bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may faithfully lead us in our calling to be a light to the world. We remember Sally, our bishop, and Marshall, our rector. In your mercy, O oh God. We lift before you the leaders of our nation, the president, the Congress, courts, and local authorities, as well as those who govern around the globe. May they always reflect your justice and strive for peace among the nations and neighbors. In your mercy, O oh God. We lift before you all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and those who struggle with themselves or with difficult situations. Infuse them with your healing power and move us to reach out to them with compassion. We pray for Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Misty, Stacy, Maura, Alex, Kay, Doug and Kirsty, Larry, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Pat, Isla, William, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Felipe, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, 
Keith, Paul, Judy, Braden, Pam, Lynn, Jeffrey, Catherine, John, Isabella, Terry, Emmy Grace, Chuck, Nan, Jackson, Betty, David, Reyes, Florence, Jimmy, and Jane. In your mercy, O oh God. We lift before you those who are dying and those who mourn. Receive the dying into your eternal embrace, accompanied by choirs of angels and greeted by the host of heaven. In your mercy, O oh God. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family and for all others for whom we intercess today. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Even though I am out of the office, there's still a lot going on in the life and ministry of St. Peter's. Um, we have decided again to extend Christmas in July because we can, and uh, that's a great thing. I truly want to thank our volunteers in the shop and all around them who have worked so very hard to make this an incredible summer in the shop, in our ministries, in our witness. And uh, it does really do truly feel like Christmas in July in that holiday sense. I also appreciate that it's so hot outside and you walk in there and it's like the North Pole. Um, so we're grateful for that. Um, there is, because of our extension of that, uh, of that Christmas in July, there's not gonna be lunch bunch today. Um, so uh, we're gonna reschedule that. We do have, do we have a date for August? Not September, we're gonna go for September, okay. So it'll resume in September, Lunch Bunch will. Got to give them a break at some point. They are our youngest volunteers, but they work very hard. We're going to have a supply priest next week. Please do offer him the best of welcome. Um, he is uh, Alan Wakabayashi. He's the uh, chaplain at Princeton and a dear colleague, deeply respected. And I'm really, we're really grateful that he's provided his time to us. And uh, Laura and I are going to be away. We're going to Pittsburgh for a gala event for my sister's, uh, my sister's uh, charity. Libby's Lungs is now an independent 501c3 foundation, and uh, with the family will be gathered in Pittsburgh to both celebrate her life uh, on the week that would have been her birthday, but also to really celebrate the witness that uh, she made in her life and the resolve that Sven, her husband, has carried on uh, to make sure that those with lung cancer get the support and care they need as a family going through an experience, and also that we continue to support lung cancer research. So we're very grateful for that. And thank you for the prayers of support and traveling mercies as we go and do that. Be back in the office actually um, the, the following week. There is no daily office this coming week. I, as I said, I am up at Madison at Drew um, and there won't be a Wednesday Eucharist, but uh, those will resume the week following. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all in those virtual and real-time experiences. Um, the forward day by day for October and, uh, from sorry, for August through October, are available here and at the back of the church. 
Um, these are the small ones for pocket and purse, and then the larger ones for home um, or for uh, large print if you need or desire that. Please do avail yourself of that. And if you have a friend who would benefit from that daily devotional, um, it's incredibly accessible. And uh, anyone, even if they're not Episcopalian or, or a member of St. Peter's, um, can enjoy that and experience it. Please do avail yourself of a couple of copies. Um, I'm trying to assess that because we do pay per copy for that. And I want to make sure we make the best possible use of them. And the usage tends to drop in this quarter in the summer. So if you do have someone that you think might like one, don't be afraid to take it and mail it to them or to give it to them as an opportunity to experience that spirituality of the Episcopal Church that is open to all. And also, you never know, you might find somebody who might be wanting to come to church with you check out more of this experience. So please do do that. As course, as always, we have ShopRite cards available. The great Luann Goglia is here with us and has those. Um, as well, if you're gonna use those, please do use the local ShopRite. You can then shop there, support the church, and also support our feeding ministries, Alice's Cup and Kelly's Cupboard. Um, both of those are in need of support. Um, Kelly's Cupboard is actually a double site because we run a 24 hour a convenience pantry, which sits right beside the parish hall, available to all, no matter when, as well as Wednesday nights for the community supper and also the pick up and take home food pantry. And then Alice's Cup. We have found very providentially that having two food pantries so close and together in terms of operation and all that actually serve two very distinct populations. So um, we have been able to expand our ability to provide food for people in need, and it's because of your support. We're very grateful for that. So please do avail yourself of that. If you have any extra produce, we're coming kind of the end of the summer squash season. Sadly, Laura's and my summer squashes were a failure crop this year. We tried an experiment, and we put the experiment in the, in the uh, compost heap uh, this after, yesterday afternoon. It was an effort. We didn't work it out. So you try, you learn, you fail, you grow. Um, but in any event, if you do happen to have extra produce, don't be afraid to donate that. We're very happy to receive that fresh produce. It comes at a premium in the shops. It's a great opportunity to give if you have that, and it's really appreciated by those in need. All right, that's everything, I think. Are there any other announcements? Jessica, do you have anything? No? Okay. All right, if there are any pastoral needs, don't be afraid to call my cell phone. Um, I am only in Madison, and though I may not be able to get to you uh, in person, I will be able to receive everything in terms of a slight tape delay, if you will, um, because of class breaks, but uh, we're always connected. And of course, give Chris a call. Um, she is going to be a little late into the office on Monday, but she'll be in the office all week. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High. Ofrecer a Dios un sacrificio de acción y gracias y cumplir vuestros votos al altísimo. Please join in singing Just As I Am, verses one through three. All things come of me, O Lord. Uh, uh, I know. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Padre Santo y Misericordioso, en tu infinito amor tú nos hiciste para ti y cuando habíamos caído en pecado y nos habíamos sometido al mal y a la muerte, tú en tu misericordiosa enviaste a Jesucristo, tu único y eterno Hijo, para compartir nuestra naturaleza humana, para vivir y morir como uno de nosotros, para reconciliarnos contigo al Dios y Padre de todos. Extendió sus brazos sobre la cruz y se ofreció a sí mismo en obediencia a tu voluntad, un sacrificio perfecto por el mundo entero. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Celebramos el memorial de nuestro redención, oh Padre, en este sacrificio de alabanza y acción de gracias. Recordando su muerte, resurrección y ascensión, te ofrecemos estos regalos. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may, we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us in the language of our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, how right. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us 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 our daily bread.
the gifts of God for the people of God the body of Christ the bread of heaven the body of Christ the bread of heaven the blood of Christ the cup of salvation Body, blood of Christ, keep in eternal life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Cuerpo de Cristo, el pan del cielo. El cuerpo de Cristo, el pan del cielo. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. El cuerpo de Cristo, el pan del cielo. Visión de Dios, por el hermoso, mi Padre, el Hijo, mi Espíritu Santo, el Señor de ustedes. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us out on the front portico of the church for some refreshment after the service. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? No lo sé. Okay. Que el Espíritu de verdad les conduza a toda verdad, dándoles gracias para confesar que Jesucristo es el Señor y para proclamar las maravillosas obras de Dios. Y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, sea con ustedes y siempre, permanece siempre con ustedes. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Please join in singing our post-communion hymn, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us, 708 in your hymnal. Salgamos al mundo reconciliándonos en el poder del Espíritu. Gracias a Dios. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. I'm going to have a question. 